Welcome back to VIC Readings, the format where we look at professional investors' recommendations. The best of the best with the best of the best recommendation. What should you invest in? This is not advice, only for information or education. Valvoline Inc. VVV by Ice Lice. Isles, October 1st, 2022. Price at that point was $25.34. Description. Until recently, Valvoline operated through two segments, retail services and global products. However, the company recently announced the sale of the global product business, which is discussed further below. Through retail services i.e. Remain Co., Valvoline operates the second largest chain of oil change centers in North America, with a network consisting of approximately 1,700 system-wide stores, including 800 company-operated stores and 900 franchise stores. Through global products, Valvoline sells vehicle motor lubricates, lubricants and related accessories um, through the North American do-it-yourself channel, i.e. retailers such as AutoZone, Walmart, etc. The North American installer and do-it-for-me channel, i.e. third-party automotive service providers and intentionally do to a long tail of retail and wholesale distribution channels. On August 1st, 2022, Valvoline announced a sale of its global pr products segment to Saudi Aramco. This sale is expected to close towards the end of calendar year 2022. The thesis on Valvoline is based on the following tenants which are topical in the current market environment. Valvoline Retail Services is a good business with secular growth. The business exhibits um, predictable, steady and defensive demand, uh, demonstrated uh, pricing power and attractive unit economics and growth characteristics all of which have resulted in the retail services business having a high teens plus EBITDA growth algorithm, with um, which we expect to continue going forward. Valvoline is a self-determined balance sheet. Following the sale of global products, the company will be net cash before deployment of the proceeds, with no need for near-term debt issuance. Valvoline is below average cyclicality for earnings with near-term accelerance to its normal growth profile. Retail services has had 16 consecutive years of positive same-store sales growth, including plus 4% year-over-year and plus 7% year-over-year same-store sales growth in 2008 and 2009, respectively, and plus 2% same-store sales growth in 2020 despite COVID-related knockdowns. This below average cyclicality will be enhanced in the near term through accelerated store count expansion and the potential commencement of an input cost deflationary cycle. Valvoline has drivers of value. Following the sale of global products, the company has outlined that it will deploy around 30% of its market cap through repurchases during 2023. Moreover, moreover, as the company will be a pure play retail business, the multiple should re-rate higher towards best-in-class retail comps. Valvoline Retail Services is a good business with secular growth. Valvoline Retail Services a business is a strong business, exhibiting predictable, steady and defensive demand, a high degree of brand equity, demonstrated pricing power, attractive unit economics and a high degree of industry fragmentation, all of which create highly predictable revenue, favorable competitive dynamics and best-in-class growth characteristics for Valvoline. Brand equity. Valvoline is one of the most iconic brands in motor lubricants, benefiting from its status as a petroleum industry first U.S. trademarked motor oil brand in 1873. The brand equity is evident in both consumer surveys, where Valvoline Instant Oil Change Service Centers consistently rank among the most trusted on digest-ranked automotive service centers as well as in the company's best-in-class unit economics and growth metrics. See below. Predictable, steady, and defensive demand. At the end of Valvoline's fiscal year 2022, a note the company has a fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, Valvoline's business will have generated 16 consecutive years of same-store sales growth, including COVID, when same-store sales grow 
growth grew plus 2% year over year despite lockdown related mobility restrictions. Demonstrated pricing power. Valve Alliance retail services segment has never had a down year in pricing in its history, and it has proven its ability to both manage periods of input cost inflation as well as maintaining pricing during input cost deflationary cycles. Favorable secular mix shift. Valvoline benefits from the industry-wide shift towards higher-ticket synthetic lubricants, which has been driven by the proliferation of smaller displacement turbocharged engines. Escalate, escalating uh, corporate aver average fuel economy uh, cafe mandates and government regulations to lower tailpipe emissions. Attractive unit economics and growth characteristics. First, the company has generated historical five-year same-store sales CAGR of plus 10% and historical five-year sales of EBITDA CAGRs of plus 22% and plus 23%, respectfully. And second, Valvoline generates attractive returns on incremental investment capital with cash-on-cash -cash returns for new units of above 30% at store productivity maturing. Overstated electrification overhang. Valvoline generates the majority of its revenue from oil changes, which are only consumed by inerminal combustion engine vehicles, not electric vehicles. However, demand for oil changes is levered to vehicles in the car park, i.e. vehicles in operation, not the number of vehicles produced in a given year. With that context, it is important to note that even on the most aggressive electrification penetration estimates, the cohort of internal combustion engines that are in the sweet spot of for Valvoline's retail services segment, i.e. plus five years old, will compromise 95% plus of the North American car park in 2030. Valvoline is a self-determined balance sheet. Valvoline's sale of its global product segment for $2.25 billion of net after-tax proceeds will enable a strong balance sheet consisting of net cash following the transactions on, and before deployment of the proceeds, proceeds from the transaction. As such, the company will not have a need for near-term debt issuance and in fact is retiring its nearest maturity bonds with a portion of the former or aforementioned sale proceeds. Furthermore, the company has discussed characteristics of an attractive capital allocation policy, including a constant net leverage target of 2.5x to 3.5x versus current pre-transaction net leverage of 2.5x. Elimination of the company's dividend, a healthy amount of reinvestment into expanding the company's retail footprint with each store generating above 30% cash-on-cash -cash returns at store productivity maturity and a large amount of repurchases, i.e. ranging from 1.2 billion or 25% of the company's current market cap to 1.5 billion or 30% of the company's current market cap, depending on pro forma net leverage. Valvoline has below average cyclicality of earnings with near-term accelerants to normal growth. Valvoline exhibits below average sensitivity to economic cycles. I mentioned above the secular growth and a secular nat nature of Valvoline's retail services segment, i.e. 16 years of consecutive positive SSS growth, including plus 4% in 2008 and plus 7% in 2009 respectfully, and plus 2% in 2020 despite COVID, which is a result of Valvoline's brand equity predictably, a predictable and steady demand for oil changes and Valvoline's relative exposure to higher income consumer. Furthermore, furthermore, the company is selling global products which, while not cyclical in absolute term, carried a higher cyclicality of earnings than Valvoline's exceedingly stable retail services earnings. Notably, Following the sale of global products, uh, Valvoline's revenue will be 100% generated in North America, i.e. 0% European exposure. The company's below average cyclicality will be enhanced in the near to medium term through accelerated store count expansion and the potential commencement of an input cost deflationary cycle. Store count acceleration. The company's new unit builds are poised to accelerate from about 50 new builds over each of the last two years and 36 new builds in 2020 to up to 75 annual new builds over the next three years. 
While a renewed uh, focus on franchise growth uh, pro portents an acceleration from the historical five-year average of 65 annual new franchise openings. Input cost deflation. First, uh, for context, base oil, a byproduct of fuel produ production, is the primary input cost of Avaline's lubricants. Second, base oil prices have inflated. About 100% since the onset of COVID, which with base oil costs decoupling from their historical premium to crude oil of about $2 per gallon to a current premium of $6 per gallon. Third, a key base oil supplier recently announced the first reduction in base oil prices since March 2020. While this initial decline in base oil prices is small, it may indicate that a deflationary cycle in valve lines costs has begun. And fourth, As Valve Align has largely passed on the recent cost inflation to customers, there's a tailwind on the come from future deflation as the company maintains pricing during periods of deflation, with the company never experiencing selling price deflation in its history. This would be additive to the below reference earnings estimate. Valve Align has drivers of values. As referenced above, the sale of global products will enable a strong balance sheet with the capacity for a large amount of share repurchases. Specifically, the company has outlined that it will have the capacity to repurchase approximately 30% of its market capitalization through 2023 and will be eliminating its dividend. Furthermore, furthermore, I believe that the sale of global products will be accredited to Valve Alliance valuation multiple. Before the sale of global products, Valvoline did not easily fit within a specific industry classification and as such has inconsistent sell-side coverage. Specifically, it has been covered by CPG analysts, basic materials chemical, chemicals analysts and transportation analysts. Furthermore, the company officially falls within the Commodity, chem commodity Chemicals Sub-Industry Index of the S&P 400. I would expect that the sale of global products, which leaves the company as a pure play, high growth retailer, will result in a more adequate sell side coverage, which in turn will enable a turnover in the company's shareholder base toward, towards retail -oriented, oriented investors. Taking all of the above together, we find the company's valuation to be attractive at 13x and 11x my 2024 20, and 2025 EBITDA, respectfully, and 14x and 11x my 2024 and 2025 EPS, respectfully. I anchor my evaluation on a price target of $45, which is based on 15x my 2024 EBITDA of 407 million dollars. This represents a 75% upside to the stock's current share price. I do not hold a position with the issuers such as employment, directorship, or consultancy. I and or others I advise hold a material investment in the issue of security. This is not my advice. It's his advice. I do not recommend anything. This is only for entertainment catalysts. Clothing is a sale of global products and repurchasing about 30% of its market capitalization. Following the closing of the sale of global products, the stocks should begin to be covered by consumer retail sales siders and buy siders. As the stocks' financials compare favorably to best-in-class retail concepts, this should enable the multiple to re-rate towards best-in-class retail peers. Base oil deflation. To the extent base oil prices deflate, this would represent a significant tailwind to the company's margins. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time.